Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oxford Matt Livestream. My name's James um, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Matt 2022 paper. People in chat are slightly lagged uh, from the moment I went live a minute ago with no audio. Uh, let's find out if I'm still still silent. I'm going to say useful things anyway. Uh, let's find out. Hi to people in chat. Hi to Denim. Hi to uh, Jack. I saw um, Gauss in there as well. Um, people are already asking about uh, shortlisting and uh, Matt scores and results and things, and hi to Imogen, um, let's find out if I'm still muted. Uh, I, I hate a, a rambling gauss in, in here as well. Uh, good stuff, right, good. I'm going to assume, unless someone tells me otherwise, that I'm uh, not still muted. It's been a couple of weeks since we did one of these. I've forgotten what I'm doing. I can't remember, can't remember what, what, what's going on. Um, this is the sort of message I wanted, by the way. There's a little bit of chat lag before it comes around, but now people are saying they can hear. That's nice, isn't it? Um, let's go uh, for a How's Your Day poll. Um, if you're first time watching live, uh, there's a way to join in uh, over in slido.com slash M-A-T-L-I-V-E. Um, and right now you can vote for How's Your Day? How's Your Day so far? On a scale from one star to five stars, um, the average is usually somewhere around three or four, and the distribution usually looks like sort of triangle. Um, Except for the day after Matt when uh, everybody wanted to vote for one star, and that was a bit sad. Let's see if people have cheered up a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, the average is currently 3.4, mood of the room, you know. Um, so that's, that's, that's a thing. Uh, Adrian behind says, hi James, hi Adrian, uh, I'm good, thanks for asking. Um, it's been a busy two weeks, we have marked a lot of Matt scripts. <laughs> um, I don't want to talk too much about the admin because admin is not actually interesting. It takes up a lot of my life, but it's not actually interesting to people. Um, and an anonymous person has joined Slido to say that they've got an interview invite from Trinity College, Cambridge. So congratulations to them. Um, Oxford decisions are on shortlisting are going to go out um, end of November, early December. So please don't worry yet if you haven't heard yet from Oxford. Um, those emails haven't gone out yet. Um, tutors are still making decisions. Um, <laughs> Imperial, Zach says in chat that Imperial have emailed to say applications still being processed, which, what is that email? Um, and there's a, <laughs> I know I know that uh, Imperial has contacted, I think, some people about um, matching map registration numbers to applications. Um, if Imperial have asked you about that, then please get in touch with Imperial to tell them your map registration number to make sure that they match up, match the mats to your... Um, also doing very well. Uh, are the tests marked? Um, I'm going to say 95% of the tests are marked. Um, 95%. There we go. Um, average has worked out to be 3.4, which is not amazing. It's that kind of triangle graph. As always, I'm looking out for people who've voted one star or two stars. Um, we're going to talk about some maths. I hope that's all right. Um, I hope that can't really make your day worse than one star at the moment. Um, maybe it has a chance of making your day slightly better. Uh, let's find out. Um, so my plan for this is to talk about map questions. Maybe that's a bit obvious. Um, I've also got a couple of graphs I can show you. Now I'm in two minds because um, some people don't want to see graphs. Um, I've got a graph for question one of everybody's responses to all of the question one questions. Um, so we can look at that at some point if you like. Um, and I've got a graph of all the Oxford maths people's scores on a, on a histogram chart. Um, uh, and the, the average, the kind of mu1 number for all of those people. Um, but I don't want people to see those if they don't want to see them. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll look at them and then put the box back over the top um, at some point when we're, when we're ready to look at graphs. Uh, but you've been warned that at some point, at some point, <laughs> there'll be graphs. If you don't want to see graphs, then at some point you might need to blink or shut your eyes. Right. Uh, and there could be polls. Please graphs. People do. Some people will want graphs. But here for graphs. Right, cool. Okay, how do I turn off the poll? It's been two weeks. Shout out to you, Prisma, in chat again. Hi, Prisma. <laughs> if you're watching this, I can only sort of remember what we're doing. <laughs> there is a plan. Weirdly enough, there's always been a plan. People want graphs. Uh, the graphs, the numbers in the graphs are slightly rounded, um, and it's not going to be like labelled, this is you, or something like that. People want graphs? Oh, gosh, graphs. Okay. Um, the graphs also help us decide what to talk about. Um, I would like to look at the question one graph first. Um, my plan is to show you this graph of, this is an indication of which parts of question one people found hard in Matt 2022. Um, if you don't want to see this, 
I'm going to show it and I'm going to count down from five and then I'll hide it again. But then I am going to talk a little bit about what we saw. Okay, um, so this is a bar chart of how people found um, question one. Um, the bars are people's responses to the five options and the green options are the correct answers to question one. Um, let's see what you can observe from these graphs. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And I said I would hide this again, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to hide the graph um, because some people don't want to see the graph. Um, so the thing I learned from that is that two of the questions cause people a lot of issues, um, and they are question one a. Oops. So something I've said on the stream a few times is we sometimes try and make the first question. Uh, a bit more of an easy way into the test paper, but unfortunately people found 1a quite hard. People also found 1j quite hard, and that makes more sense because 1j is usually the hardest one out of those 10. And that was the one that people were least successful, least successful at. How, ma how much am I going to upset people if I just have that graph on the screen? Oxford has not sent that invite yet. Not yet. Um, yeah, so 1a, pretty surprising that that one didn't fall through. The rest sort of fine. I'm, I was a bit surprised that people on F um, maybe have a chat about F as well. But that's kind of my impression of what we want to talk about over there. Um, and then we've got some long questions. So the long questions are this one about um, differences of, well, not quite differences of two squares because of the 19. So that's not a square. Um, although difference of two squares does come into this question. Um, question three was this one about integration to integrate a function uh, trying to get zero for the value of the of the integral. Sometimes that's possible, sometimes it's not possible. Uh, question four was about um, multiplying distances together to get one. So given two points, uh, can you find the, the other points on some curve P? So that the multi if you multiply those distances together, you get one. Question five had a bit of reading, and it's about opening doors. So maybe you've got four or five doors, um, and after opening a door, a host who is trying to prevent you from winning things might swap prizes behind them according to some rules. Um, question six is about influencer networks. People will change their mind based on who they're following, um, and there's some consequences of what well, that happens to the graph. Um, uh, seven was about this data operator it's got a storage unit a uh, storage unit that can hold a sequence and can put stuff onto the onto both onto both ends um, onto both ends of the storage unit and then pop them off the right hand side into the output channel and so it's a sort of slightly unusual storage unit for that question let's get a reminder of what we've got okay um, so bearing in mind what we've seen um, and your own memories of doing the test um, I'd quite like to go through the question um, in a bit more detail than I did in the 10 minute video. I'd quite like to talk about um, what people found difficult in the questions um, and maybe a little bit about marks. Um, but I also want to tell some stories about the questions. Yeah, so someone said, no, I'm getting intense flashbacks. Um, you should probably not watch this live stream. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I really am sorry, but this whole live stream is going to be like this. I'm sorry. Um, should we have a look at them? Let's let's do a vote. Uh, I think this is the right one. Uh, how do I work it out? How do I work out which one? How does this work? Okay, okay. There's a poll voting for what we're going to talk about. Um, and let's have a quick look at what's going on here. Um, in chat, has the mats already been marked? Yeah, we've marked. I'd say about ninety-five percent of the scripts. Um, I think we've marked almost ninety-five percent of the scripts we were expecting. We know that some people aren't submitting a script because some people couldn't do the mat. Um, there was a typhoon in Hong Kong. There were quite a few other people who were unable to take the mat. Um, so I think 95% might be almost what we're getting. People on the average. Okay, let's do the average. Okay, while you're voting and looking at slider about what you want to see, um, I'm going to show you the graph. Um, we'll do this graph for just a little bit. Um, and I'll have, it's got the average score on it as well. Um, I'm going to have a look at this one, but not for too long, because I don't want to scare anyone with this graph. Um, it looks like this. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. It looks a lot like the how are you feeling graph for um, today's poll, right? It's got a big peak in the middle. Um, and this test was a bit harder, or people found it harder compared to 
how people found last year's test, um, how people found uh, the uh, previous test and the one before that. It's the lowest average score since 2019. 2019 was quite low. It's about the same as 2014, um, which was a little bit below. I like it to be about 50, 48 and a half. Right, cool, there we go. Uh, what is this poll? This poll is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do question one. We're gonna have a go at question one. We're gonna do bits of it. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, should we go and do it? Should we have a go? Yeah, I already know. What's next? Uh, was this harder than 2019, Matt? I don't think so, no. Um, people attempting it on a... <laughs> uh, people attempting it online have also been marked. We got your scripts, don't worry. Some people did an online thing. It's complicated. Uh, Votary in for question one to talk about. I guess I want to talk about 1A and 1J, and then if people want other bits of one, they can tell me after that. Should do some bits of multiple choice. Good bit of multiple choice warm up, hey? Let's go. Uh, we will do all the questions. We're going to do as many questions as we can. We've got two hours. Um, two hours is uh, quite a lot of time. Not a huge amount of time. Might skip some multiple choice questions. Um, some of them are not the most exciting questions in the world. Um, okay, so 1A introduces this uh, new thing that maybe you've seen before, maybe not. Um, vertical bars around X. Um, so here, vertical bars around X. And think like distance. Um, it looks a bit like the, the distance. And in fact, it is the distance between 0 and the number X. Anyway, uh, there's a hint underneath. Uh, this thing is equal to X if X is uh, bigger than or equal to 0, and it's equal to minus X otherwise. Um, <laughs> um, so there are two cases here. And I think everyone did the same sort of algebra for this, right? So two cases, either x is positive, and these weird objects on the left and the right are both just x, um, or x is negative, in which case these weird objects are this. We've got two quadratic equations. Uh, we can solve quadratic equations. Um, we're really good at solving quadratic equations. Um, x is 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4. <laughs> b squared minus 4ac. Can I solve? We're really good at solving quadratic equations, I said. Uh, this one over 2. Um, or if x is negative, then we get x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0, which has solutions uh, 3, goodness me, plus or minus, what am I doing? b squared minus 4ac. Ah, a bigger number here. Um, nine. <laughs> Subtracting is really hard. Right. Okay. I think I've got there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, ooh, interesting. Loads of stuff. Interview questions is in two weeks' time. There's a special interview questions live stream, but I think it's one in two weeks' time, not the one today. Did I put it wrong on the website? <laughs> if James gets this wrong, we get all the marks. That's not how any of this works. That's not how this works. Checking my plan. Am I on the plan? I'm on the plan. This is the Mac 2022 debrief. It's the 17th of November. Sorry, gals. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so we've got um, four solutions out here, um, but we've got to check that we're, we're being consistent. Um, we've got to check that in this case, the x positive case, that we ended up with positive numbers, and these are both positive um, because root 5 is not that big. Root 5 is smaller than 3 because 5 is smaller than 9. Um, in this case, though, we've got to check that these numbers are negative, and actually only one of them is negative. The one 3 plus root 13 over 2 is really it's quite positive. 3 minus root 13 over 2 is negative. So only one uh, solution here, in this case, uh, is consistent. OK. Um, so that's uh, only three solutions overall. That's so why the answer is D um, and not E. Um, and actually, lots of people picked E. I can see why. Um, because you've got two quadratics. Uh, you've got two quadratics. Um, you've got four numbers that look like they all work. But I guess this is the sort of time to check check answers in quadratics. Um, so that's what, what makes this hard uh, question really hard. Um, did we change definition of X, mod X? I think that's what mod X means. I think that's what mod x means. Uh, it's not the same thing as um, this thing, uh, floor x, 
which might have been in. Do we have Florex in one of the um, sessions before? I've seen I've seen some people write um, this bit for like the integer part, maybe. Okay, it's not that. Uh, but we did put a note in brackets about what this is. Paper harder than 2019. Oh wow. Um, okay. Um, been chilling. Um, yeah. Okay. Mark scheme of marks comes out um, quite a bit later. I think end of the round. End of the round we publish this full sort of breakdown mark scheme. I've got a draft of it on my desk. I've got a draft of it. Uh, it's not ready to go on the website. It needs all these the um the model the web solutions thing. And people often write to me to say that the web solutions are not good enough, that they don't have enough stuff in them. Uh, they often contain some diagrams and some extra bits and pieces that actually take a surprising amount of time to um, do. Oh, did we use floor x for the graph question with n choose to n? Oh, right, yeah, there was a... Did we use this notation, though? This is not something I thought about before. Um, what did we use in that graphs question? Do, 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 do. I'm looking at it on my other screen. That's a terrible thing to do. It's not very good content. Um, can't find it. Right. Okay. Possibly there's something that's different from previous, previous, previous year. Um, but hopefully this hinted in brackets helps you get at least started with the question. Okay. Um, the other one that we got lots of issues with was J. Um, here the most popular answer was C. Um, but the correct answer was E. Um, I have a story for this question as well. Um, <laughs> Denim in chat, sorry. This feels like a really harsh way to learn things, and I get it. But on the other hand, we have invested a lot of time into worrying about these questions, so I sort of hope that by trying to learn from them, we're still like learning and growing, right? If you don't want to learn and grow from these questions, then this is not the right live stream. I think Denim is a um, big, big idea. This is a good learning and growing. I should probably check my solutions, but I couldn't be bothered. So that was, I think, good. Oh, that's gone. Oh, no, it's just been pushed down in chat. Um, oh, square brackets. Thank you, Adam. Right, OK. Um, J, the first thing we need to realize when reading J um, well, hmm. There are two ways to do this question. There's a geometric way to do the question, and there's an algebraic way to do the question. Um, quite often on the map, I've seen past questions where we set you a geometry problem with some circles and some lines, and the correct thing to do is to turn it into an algebra problem and then solve the algebra problem and do some sort of simultaneous equations or whatever, and then reinterpret your solution in terms of geometry. Um, this question is the opposite. Um, it starts with algebra, and the best way to do it is to convert it to a geometry problem, then do some geometric reasoning and reinterpret that in terms of algebra. So here's the algebra. Um, there is an algebra, fully algebraic way to do the question as well, um, but I'd like to show you the geometry first. Um, so um, the fact that this equation has a repeated root x means that the circle is tangent to the line y equals mx plus c. But this line is a tangent to that circle. Um, this fact on the left from here, the equation blah has a repeated root x, is the same thing as that, I think. Um, if you've got a circle and a line, then this repeated root is because there's only one solution for where that line meets the circle. Not two, because it's crossing the circle, and not zero, because it's missed the circle, but just one, because it's tangent to the circle. Okay. Um, this is pretty uh, good, because this gives, gives us a way to say that this line that we're being asked about, final thing is we're being asked about this line y equals mx plus c, um, well, it's tangent to this circle. And this is just very nothing too mysterious about this circle. It's the unit circle um, centered at the origin. You can even draw a little picture of it. There it is. Um, I've sort of missed the origin a bit, haven't I? Um, there we go. Um, and similarly, the other one, if this is equal to y, this says something about tangents to the circle, tangents to the circle x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. 
um, which is a different circle, center 3, 1, and the same radius. Um, 3, 1 is quite large. 3, 1 means it's over here. Um, 3, 1. OK. Um, radius 1. So uh, it's to the right and up a bit. OK. Um, oh, look, it's James and the Giant Peach. Um, OK. These circles don't overlap, I think, because the distance from the origin to 3, 1 is root 10, and root 10 is bigger than 2, um, something like that. Uh, radius is 1, twice the radius is 2, the distance between the centres, think about how far apart they are. Anyway, I think my picture's OK. Circles are supposed to be the same. Let's make my circles the same size, which I'm going to cheat on my picture by just copy-pasting. There we go, that's better. Okay. Um, so then the question is, how many lines are there that are tangent to both of these circles? Um, and I can really see why everyone picked two, which is a shame, because I think if you manage to turn this algebra question into a geometry question, how many lines are tangent to both of these circles, then you had a good, good attempt at the question. Um, you'd probably scribbled this somewhere in the space underneath or in the back of your booklet, um, to find that ah, there are these two lines, a tangent to both of these circles. These are examples of lines y equals mx plus c that are tangent to both of the tangent to both of the circles. Uh, yeah, one is ah, yeah, this circle is quite low. <laughs> My picture is not to scale because that one is yeah, we can improve this picture. This one is quite a lot lower. It sits down on the down on the x-axis. Um, because its centre is at 1 and its radius is 1, the point three zero is on that circle. That's annoying me now. I'm going to redo my lines. Thank you. Who said that in chat? Who was that? Uh, I don't know who said that. Would I collaborate with Tom Rock's Maths? Hey, we have collaborated. If you check out Oxford Online Mathematics, uh, no, if you check out the Oxford Online Maths Club, there's an episode with Tom Rock's Maths on that show. Tom came on our show. Uh, was it earlier this year? I think it was earlier this year. Um, unfortunately for this question, there are two more lines that are tangent to both circles. This line at the bottom goes under both circles. This line goes over both circles. You could also have a line that goes under the first one and over the second one. And you could have a line that goes over the first one and under the second one. Oh, that one was not very well drawn. So there are in fact four lines that are tangent to both circles. Um, so the answer is four. I think people sort of don't like it when I do story time, but I want to tell the story here that this question is um, supposed to be about this translation between, aha, it's an algebra problem that you turn into geometry, use your geometric intuition about drawing these lines in, and then you get a solution to the algebra problem. Um, but I actually thought of it in the first place as a geometry problem. Um, and it's, I think, not a very interesting geometry problem. So it doesn't work as a geometry problem on its own. Um, and the algebra has been brought in so that the question is slightly obfuscated like that. It's like disguised as an algebra problem. By the way, you can, um, so, so although it's this nice concept of algebra that you have to turn into geometry, it's sort of morally bankrupt because I thought of it the other way around. I thought of it the conventional way around. So anyway, I turned the geometry problem into the algebra problem, decided that I didn't want to solve the algebra problem, went back to my geometric intuition, drew four lines in and thought, yeah, I could probably multiple choice. People, people think of these four lines, right? Um, gosh. So then you set the question and people managed to turn it into the geometry because I've seen in people's booklets. I've seen in people's booklets and underneath, I've seen the pictures of two circles with the two lines on. And that's irritating to me because it means that People realise what to do with my question. They realise to convert the algebra into a geometry question, and then trying to do the geometry question that I thought I thought the geometry question was too easy to do as a, a question on its own. How many lines are tangent to both these circles? But unfortunately, it's turned out that the geometry bit is really hard. Um, it seems like these extra two lines are really not obvious to most people, uh, and that makes me quite sad because it means that maybe could have set this question the other way around. That's just a normal here's a geometry question where you're supposed to turn it into an algebra question and then actually go and solve the algebra because these things are just quadratics. What does a Q look like? There's a Q. Um, quadratics. 
I know I draw too many arrows, but here, these things are both quadratics, and we're looking for repeated roots, so we can write down the discriminants. So we could write down the discriminants. The discriminants will turn out to be quadratics in, uh, is it quadratics? Yeah, the discriminants will be quadratics in, in M. These ones are quadratics in X. Um, they're simultaneous quadratics, because there's two of them uh, in terms of M and C. We can plug one into the other and then think about solving them. In fact, if you want to draw a picture of this really precisely, if you want to draw this greatly, then you have to do all of that work in order to work out what the actual values of M and C are. Um, but you don't have to do that if you were trying to draw some sort of accurate picture of this diagram for a thumbnail or something, so that'd be uh, a big waste of everyone's time. Um, how do you mark imperial, do you mark imperial applicants' papers too? Yes, I do, uh, or rather my team does. Uh, same team, we get all the scripts. We don't know, when we're marking them, we don't know if they're Oxford or Imperial. Um, we've got your candidate numbers, so it's not, it's not like we mix them all up, but um, we mark them without worrying about which universities you've applied to. Alfie was thinking about the circles touching. Ah, that's annoying. And the circles don't touch, so you've realised a good geometric thing from that. Uh, what would that be? That would be a repeated route to... See, the thing is, Alfie, Alfie's kind of invented a different map question. Okay, you've done a slightly different question, but you can kind of turn that into a 2023 question 1J if you want to. Um, Similar to a question in this year's AEA, I should go and look that up. Um, bit of a blind spot for me. I can't remember the last time I've seen an AEA paper. Um, other takes on this. Four lines of tangent to two circles. How many lines are tangent to two spheres? Uh, infinitely many that lie on the pair of cones, the double cone thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, two spheres. Higher dimensions, chat loves higher dimensions, higher dimensions. So take a cross section, take a cross section through your two spheres. Uh, so these are the centers, take a cross section through your two spheres, um, and then you've got lines like this that go above, and you've got the crisscross lines. But you can also rotate around, rotate around this um, axis that goes between, this axis that goes between the two centers, you can rotate around that, so you get infinitely many lines that lie on uh, this outside cone because they're two lines outside cone, or possibly a cylinder, and then two lines that lie on, uh, two lines that, these inside lines will spin around to produce a kind of double cone. I haven't described that very well. Spheres, infinitely many, in two different ways. Uh, yeah, cylinder and cones. Yes, good. Um, if you don't believe me, find a ping pong ball and an orange, and a pencil, and we'll try and hold all those things at once. Right, good. <laughs> Homework. <laughs> ping pong ball, orange, pencil. Go for it. Uh, you can send the photos of your ping pong, orange ball, pencil contraption to... Uh, is there a website? Yeah, no, okay, maybe don't do that. Right, good. <laughs> when a computer science is going to release ravages, I don't know. Uh, maybe the end of the process. I know they do a big report at the end. Um, it's slightly mad of me to release statistics on the way through. How do I know that y equals mx plus c? I think it's in the question, right? Um, so I don't. When I look at when I look at these equations, there's nothing to say that y should be equal to mx plus c. Um, but if you introduce the line y equals mx plus c, then you can reinterpret. And there's a clue in the question when it says the line y equals mx plus c. Um, you can reinterpret this equation having a repeated root. You can reinterpret that as that line I've just invented is tangent to the circle. Um, this is a sort of thing that comes from the geometric stuff. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the upper and lower recommended marks which I've sent to colleges. Um, sorry. I just think it will stress people out. Um, don't worry about it. There's nothing you need to do right now. Um, colleges are making shortlisting decisions and we'll let you know end of November or early December. We're currently learning from maths questions. What's the lowest maths score anyone's ever got in with? Zero. Um, Send picture to a link at the bottom of the screen. Oh gosh. Is there a link at the bottom of the screen? I know it's big for you, it's small for me. No, it's just the join live chat button, isn't it? And the website. If you go on the website, you can probably uh, find out how to contact us. Um, uh, Zach says, What's my school? No one expects to know. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, the papers are marked by separate question teams. So it's a question, question marking question. Um, each long question is marked by a different team. 
of graduate students. They talk to each other a lot. Oh, somebody voted for 1D? Sorry, the link rather. There are links on screen. There's a link on screen. There's a link in the description. Sorry, link in the YouTube description? Probably something like that. Um, I didn't do the story for 1A. I didn't do the story time. Story time. I know that some people don't like story time, but uh, it's my show. <laughs> Sorry, that's quite aggressive, wasn't it? Um, I know some people don't like story time, but I do. Um, um, this is based on somebody's research. I went to a research seminar. Um, it was about uh, lakes and glaciers and things melting. And at one point they had to solve an equation that looked a little bit like this. Um, it had, inside it had some mod x's and it had some x's. Oh, I just called that mod x or absolute value of x, never mind. Um, inside some equation. And it was a question a bit like this, it had some powers on there as well, and they, they had to solve it in these two different cases, and they had some nice plots of the pictures. The pictures are really cool because um, it's kind of like a quadratic, and then a, a different quadratic over on the other side, where you flipped over, flipped over a different quadratic, so you get these kind of... The, the picture's really cool um, for how many solutions you get. Um, you, can, you can get four solutions, you can get different old solutions. Um, this was just some small part of what they had to do in order to understand Glacier science, so this all seemed quite nice. Um, anyway, uh, chance of a person around 50, uh, around 50 math score or around 50 years old? Um, around 50 math score, it's not impossible at all. Um, around 50 age, not impossible at all. I should just say, not impossible at all. 1D, I quite, um, uh, it turns out I can't do this question, I find it too hard. Um, so well done if you got anywhere with this. Um, I can't keep track of all the twos and threes. Um, Alfie liked it. Uh, I think someone requested it. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Does that mean we do research maths now? Um, Gauss. Hey Gauss! You can do research maths because you're Gauss. But yeah, sure. Um, am I pronouncing this word wrong? <laughs> is this about the A's again? This is the A's. This is the London. The London boy can't say things. Glaciers? Glaciers. Glaciers. <laughs> I can't say it at all. Right, good. Hi, future James. Um, Mames Jomaro says, James, in your 10 minute video, you sounded so confident of this one. In the 10 minute video, I circled the wrong answer. Um, the 10 minute video had to get pulled down because we needed to rapidly edit a new version where it looks like I circled the correct answer in the 10 minute video. There's a re-upload on the main channel where it looks like I picked the right answer. But yeah, the audio is really confident. The audio is great, it's all, ah, I keep track of the threes and twos and then it's this one and I circled the wrong one. Um, confident and wrong. That should be on my business card. Confident and wrong. Um, glaciers. Glaciers. <laughs> <laughs> Learning to talk with James at Oxford. Glacier. Um, right, good. Okay, there's a difference, dis difference of opinion in chat. Glashes? No, I'm getting worse. It's getting, wor it's getting worse. Chat, we need to move on before it gets any, anyth anything worse than this. Um, I do sort of believe that this question is about keeping track of the twos and threes. Uh, the thing that it's based on. No, let's not do the story. Let's do the maths first. Um, I'm getting carried away with story time. Um, so, everyone makes mistakes, right? Some of us publish our mistakes to YouTube. Um, some of us, that is the mistake. Um, sort of double mistake of making a mistake in the first place and then also publishing it to a place where hundreds of people will immediately tell you you're wrong. Um, I don't often get allowed to post videos to the main channel. This was a one time I posted a video to the main channel. Uh, is accent snobbery a thing at Oxford? Why, they, they let me wander around saying stuff like this, so I don't think so. No. Um, I think... I don't have anything clever to say. I wonder if I wonder if Prisma wants to say anything clever about accents. Oh, the accent thing is right here. Cool. Kai, you missed um, 1A and 1J. There's some stuff. Um, right, good. Okay. Um, what are we doing? We've worked out A0 we've worked out A because it's in the question. We've worked out A1 is 8 times 3 is 4. I really don't want to simplify it. I think, I think I don't want to sort of work out that number because I think that's a trap to go and work out. 
three, nine, 27, 81, 81 times eight. I don't want to go and calculate it because I won't recognize the number. And these, these answers I'm looking for are all in nice simplified uh, power notation. Um, okay, so let's try and work out 82. So that's eight times, eight times three to the four to the power of four, which is eight times eight to the four times three to the, uh, could I, write, I could write 16 or I could write four times four. Okay, excuse me. Uh, and then A3 will be eight times, so maybe the trick here is to not simplify too much, um, which is eight times eight to the four times eight to the four times four times three to the four times four times four. And now I've got a good idea about what's going on. Um, the third term here, I can see what's three about this. Um, it's three fours up here. Um, that this original three has been raised to the fourth power three times. That kind of makes sense. Um, and when you do that, you get quite a lot of threes. Um, that's, so I think up here, this is two to the six for this pink box over here. Um, let's think about the eights. Um, the eights, I suppose I could write that as eight to the one. Uh, and when you, when you multiply these things together, you're supposed to add the powers together. So I guess we need to add these powers, eight to the one plus four plus 16. Do I recognize this? Oh yes, this is a geometric series. Um, it's a geometric series, I can probably sum that if I try really hard. Um, and if I try really hard and sum that series, then I get one of these options. Hmm. Yeah, hi, if you've missed um, the first bit of chat, we did the average, it's about 48 and a half. There was a graph. Um, somebody asked earlier, what if my handwriting's really bad? Um, and if your handwriting is really bad, we will do our best to read it. Um, I have been on call for the last couple of weeks to read bad handwriting. Um, we've got a special channel in our in our um, marking team overall to get my attention to come and look at bad handwriting. Over the years, I've got quite good at reading bad handwriting. Um, if we can't read it at all, we request the physical script. We have a look at the physical script. And then if we can't read that at all, then there's not much more we can do. Okay. Um, the answer ends up being <laughs> let's not circle it. The answer ends up being one of these one of these options that's a sort of power of a power. Um, oh, let's, I'm sort of avoiding simplifying this geometric series because I think I'll get it wrong. Um, if I already got it wrong, people telling me this in in chat. Ah, Denim's worried that I've probably seen some of Denim's paper. Um, due to handwriting, handwriting. <laughs> we will see. Uh, where do these eights come from? If I got my eights right, so there's an eight. A one has gone eight, and then that gets raised to a four, and another one gets put in, and then it gets raised. All of those get raised to a four, and another one gets put in. So I think it is this. I'm just struggling a little bit to simplify. I suppose I want eight to the power of one plus four plus sixteen plus dot 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 plus. 4 to the 9, because that's 4 squared for a 3. Um, I can remember how to do this. Yeah, I can remember how to do this. Um, this is 8 to the power of 4 to the 10 minus 1 over 3, which is the cube root of 8. Same thing as cube root of 8 to the power of 4 to the 10 minus 1. Like that, oh my goodness, which is 2 to the 2 to the 20 minus 1. So we get this divided by two, we get two to the 20, and we've got a three to the 20 from this three thing over here, so it's E. We got there in the end. Change the eights into twos, thank you. Uh, yeah, right, there was two to the thing, three to the thing. Do you cross that right answer? Um, our mar cross that marking policy is, if you crossed out the answer and replaced it with something else, then we mark the replacement. If you crossed it out and didn't write anything else, then we do our best to read the thing that you crossed out. Um, so if you wrote something great, crossed out lightly and then didn't write anything else, then we'll do our best to read it. Oh, is it the 152185 sequence? Oh, sums of uh, sums of powers of four. Moo, which question's that? I don't remember that sequence coming up before. I remember something like that, but with a 55 for Catalan numbers. Anyway, um, that's the average for, we haven't made the interview offers, haven't made the interviews, haven't, haven't, haven't invited people to interviews yet. So that's the average for everyone. Uh, it's a little bit lower than it has been before. Um, this one is based on a thing from, 
I'm going to say computer science, but really numerical analysis, I suppose. Um, if you've got... Um, <laughs> so sometimes you're trying to estimate something. You've got your computer program, it runs, maybe it calculates pi, and it has a good guess of how big pi is. Um, and it, but it makes some error. Um, it has some, uh, has some error, uh, a, n. Um, because you're going to run the code again, you're going to run it um, using that new starting guess. You're going to run your code again using that starting guess, and it will have another go at working out what pi is, doing some clever maths based on your starting number, and some, some stuff, knowledge of how pi works, to get a little bit closer to guessing what pi is. Um, quite often, processes like this um, have some relationship where your new error is related to your previous error raised to some power. Um, if you've done newton raphson in school, you know about this method of finding roots of equations, where you have you have like a you have a you have a graph. You're looking for its roots. Um, your process is something like uh, start at some point, so have a guess of what your root is, and then do something clever with involving geometry to get some new guess of the root. Um, so there's some clever geometry behind newton raphson Must be clever. It's got Newton in it, um, and that gives you some new error, um, which is usually a bit better. Um, uh, so there's these things in numerical analysis where you have a sequence of errors that get better, that the errors get smaller over time. Um, because the errors are getting smaller over time, uh, usually through some relationship like this, where each one is related to a power of the previous one. Um, and this question is just exploring if you have something where it's related to the power of the previous one, then you uh, get an interesting sequence. There's a power of powers. Um, if you do this again, but with a small starting number, if a0 is 1 over 3, then you get something that gets really small really fast. Um, these algorithms are really interesting because even the most basic ones are exponential in uh, how, how quickly they converge. Um, so they're pretty exciting things. Right, okay, that was, I feel like, not an interesting story. <laughs> What's the 2019 recommended lower threshold? Oh, gosh. 2019, we still had GCSE data, so it would have involved GCSEs, so it's not as not as clear cut. Um, it would have been a combination of math and GCSE, and then it's some abstract constructed number from that. Sorry, I can't remember what it was. Uh, not even an interview. Yeah, just everyone. Do they form the Mandelbrot set? Uh, I don't know. No, those are some numbers, right? Um, oh, I know what you mean. Mandelbrot set. Um, there's a recurrence relation like this. There's a relationship like this that is part of the definition of how the Mandelbrot set works. You're right. We should do the Mandelbrot set one day. We should talk about that. Good, good spot. Uh, I showed people a graph for the average for maths, maths and stats, maths and philosophy. Just have another look at the graph. People seem to be looking for the graph. If you don't want to see the graph, if you want to hear about the average, we're going to talk about the average very briefly. I know I've mentioned it a few times, it's turned up in chat, so it doesn't really worked. Um, graph's going to be on screen for another five seconds. Um, that's the graph. Five, four, three, two, one. It kind of looks like previous graphs. Uh, the average of maths, maths and stats, maths and philosophy. Right, cool, but people don't really want to look at that, right? Mandelbrot on Math Club. Mandelbrot, Mandelbrot. Man, I brought set. We can do the song as well. Uh, we can't do the song for copyright reasons. Um, ooh, I found a way to write a square root of two as an infinite sum of pi multiples. Ooh, can I guess what it is? I, I'm going to guess what it is. Um, I'm going to guess that you've got a right angled. No, don't tell me. Okay, okay. Homework for other people. Um, here's a way to write. If you fill a triangle with circles, you can maybe work out how many circles there are and how big the circles are, and maybe you can fill stuff up. I don't know. Maybe that gives you a way to write out one half in terms of multiples of pi. That's what that made me think of. Uh, do I have a graph for computer science? No. Uh, I have a graph for my courses. Um, don't bother computer science. They're also <laughs> they're doing a lot of stuff. They're going to release some statistics at some point. OK, um, I think we've talked about question one. Um, I'm going to quickly skim through to see if I've got any good stories about any of the rest of it. 100 circles. Mostly I like the idea of starting a question 100 circles. Um, multiplying out brackets. Uh, this is not a very exciting question. Uh, lots of people picked this. I can see why. Halfway through you solve a quadratic. The quadratic's got two roots. It's not very obvious which root you want. 
both of these numbers inside the bracket are square are positive. It's not amazing. Um, this question is quite a nice. There's quite a nice way to factorize this that you discover midway through the question. Um, it's worth trying this um, if you haven't seen this before. Um, this thing factorizes as, and I think this is amazing. I think that's true. Um, yeah, it's the difference of two squares. It's the difference of this square and this square. Yeah. Um, which is kind of nice. It gives you this way to factorize n to the 4 plus 4. Um, you can kind of discover this fact that I've written up based on the given fact by doing some cunning multiplications. Uh, what was the 2021 recommended line threshold? Oh, gosh. 50-something, uh, maybe? But there wasn't... It's not, it's not a hard cutoff. It's people... We do these really broad recommendations for consistency between colleges. They're not that important. 50-something, um, 70-something? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, anything else we're going to talk about? Uh, logarithms. You know me, I love logarithms. Probabilities and binomial choices. This is a mashup question. Mashup between uh, binomial probabilities and um, binomial events, I guess. Not even a mashup. <coughs> Alice and Bob are in this question. Um, Charlie has been in a recent question. I think when we talked about the Charlie question recently, somebody said, What happened to Alice and Bob? And here they are. I don't know. Okay. Um, the names are getting out of hand. Uh, do you want to see, see, the, see the dice probability one? Not really. Kai skips this one. Did we do I? Thing is, it's kind of too confusing, right? Um, there's a lot of coin flipping going on. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so Alice is trying to get heads. Uh, Bob is also trying to get heads. Alice wins if she gets more heads than Bob. Um, and it's a draw if they get the same number of heads. So those are the three things that can happen. Alice gets more heads, it's a draw, or Bob gets more heads. Um, um, an important thing to realise is that the probability that Alice wins is the same as the prob probability that Bob wins. Um, Bob is also trying to get lots of heads. Uh, more than Alice, um, there's this draw condition, but otherwise um, Alice and Bob, it's like that. Um, and it turns out to be easier to work out the probability of a draw, just because it's easier to keep track of stuff, I think. Um, so if it's a draw, that means they've got the same number of heads tossed by each person, um, which might be zero or one or two or three or four or five. What are the probabilities of these things happening? Well, you can work out these things individually. Um, the probability that they both get no heads means that they've both flipped. Uh, they've both flipped... Oh, I'm not going to write it like that. I'm going to write it like 2 to the 10. Um, they've both flipped five tails. Both got zero heads. It's a draw. Um, there are several ways that can happen. Um, there are quite a lot of ways that the next thing that can happen... Um, if they each flip one head, it's a draw. And there are lots of ways this can happen, because there are lots of ways that Alice can flip one head. Uh, there are five coins that she's going to flip, so five choose one of those, and that's five, <laughs> ways that one of them could be a head. Um, I need to allow for Bob's coins separately, uh, which is why I put this little squared in here. Um, five choose one for choosing which one of Alice's, choosing which one of Bob's, multiply those together because they're independent choices. Um, and similarly, because of how I've written it, I suppose, uh, similarly... There are things like this for how many weight the probability that these things happen. Um, for example, in here, this is the probability that Alice gets three heads multiplied by the probability that Bob gets three heads, like this. Um, okay, uh, good. Uh, there's this one third thing down the bottom, just in case. I don't think many people picked it. Could look at the charts, I guess. Um, how many people did the mat? Uh, several thousand people did the mat. Um, Let's not think about that too much. Um, good, okay. Um, and interview, <laughs> interview invitations will go out in either late November or early December. We've tried to give people a week's notice um, before interviews and we send out all the emails then. Um, what is Van der Monte's identity to get the value immediately? Oh, we haven't seen. Oh my goodness. 
Is this one of these things where I read it out and then someone's like, ah, oh, that sounds like a rude word. Uh, no, it's an actual thing. Oh my goodness. It's a really complicated thing. I need to learn about this. This looks much more complicated than the thing I asked. <laughs> so, uh, who in chat, who's this? Asdaf Asdaf. Asdaf Asdaf has linked me to this Wikipedia article. Oh my goodness. This is like sending me homework, because now I've got to go and learn what this is. Oh, it's look, multiplying polynomials together. Have I got M and N to be the same thing? Oh my goodness, it's got a geometrical proof. Ah, I can go away. Right, cool. Homework, thank you. Um, is doing negative binomial geometric distribution makes this way easier to understand? I don't know what those things are. I'm not... Wow. Now I've admitted I don't know what those things are. Geometric distribution. No, it's binomial. Negative binomial. That's the one with... I do remember that. No, I don't think it's not quite related. Okay. Um, what do I think the average shortlist score is going to be? I, I don't know. Um, it's really complicated this year. Um, lots of people were affected by this typhoon. Um, so they're not in the picture for the average. Um, it's too complicated. Should we do a question? Let's do a question. It's Matt Livestream. We should probably just talk about Matt. Did I do all the stories that I wanted to do on question one? Yeah, I did the terrible iterative iterative scheme thing, the geometry algebra thing, the research question. I can't remember what this is about. I'm sure I had a story for that. Anyway, right, what's next? Let's uh, reset this and see what people want to talk about. Um, oh, they made a McLaurin's. Oh my goodness. One less than the power of two. Oh my goodness. Use the one less than the power of two. 63. Oh, I think that's a coincidence. That's a good guess. Though. Oh my goodness. 63 is one less than the power of two. Is that just how this works? Does Van der, Mon Van der Monde tell me that it always adds up to one less than the power of two? I should go and do this question, right? If Alice and Bob decide to instead flip seven coins instead of five coins, um, it's, it feels a little bit like uh, some people in chat can do that question faster than me. Um, it feels a bit like they're going to leave me in the dust. What's the answer for seven coins? I don't know. I've, I've got to go and work out all those possibilities and square them and add them and divide by two to the 14. It feels a bit like chat's leaving me behind. Um, am I playing that all the question ones aren't really questions? They are questions. Some of my favourite questions are question ones. I don't care for this one. Anyway, um, two's winning this vote. How many votes has it got there? Oh, not very many. We'll give it a second. Give it a second. Two and five, which kind of makes sense because they're the most ones that most people do. Three and four are getting some votes because they're by population. That is how, how things work, isn't it? Um, we can maybe start talking about tea. Let's give it a second on this voting, but two is pulling ahead. Um, I think I want to reveal as well, maybe this is... I could tell people how many marks are available for each part, because we've got that. We haven't put it on the website yet. This was like quite a strange way to release information. I feel a bit sorry for people who just want the information and have to watch four, 54 minutes of a live stream to get it. Oh, don't vote one again. It's really annoying. It's really annoying removing things from the poll. 4% of people. It's just, it's, just, it's just irritating going into the poll and scrolling and deleting things. Um, oh, we're going again to do all the questions. Let's just do it. Let's just do questions. Let's see what happens. Right. Two's won that vote. But look, please do for all questions, please. Uh, I'm revealing marks. Okay. Um, so, skim read the question. You've now had time, I think, uh, since the test to download a copy of this if you wanted to, to have a really look back at it. Um, so, uh, two points at the top here for determining the value of n, um, and I guess a little bit for showing that this thing is actually true, not just guessing a value of, does this show that part over here? Not just guessing a value of n, although I think we were quite nice to you if you just guessed a value of n. Um, three marks in here. Um, at least one for finding z if x is 13 and y is 3. Um, I've got a comment on that. I'll put a star here so I remember to come back and say the comment. Um, there's a hence here. Um, 
find this pair of whole numbers, we gave you a couple of marks for that. Um, three marks for the idea to convert four to four to one, um, and this bit to say that this is not unique, to realize that we can use one again. Um, so three marks down there. Um, this kind of separate, completely separate part of the question that's kind of nothing to do with everything else was worth about three marks for describing why you can't get any solutions to this. This is, it's a good thing this is worth three marks because um, some people just wrote a little bit of stuff and it wasn't completely convincing, but we, we could give that marks. Um, and some people write more complete things that we could give three marks to. Um, if it had just been one mark, it would be, you know, we'd have to only give you the mark if you write down an extremely convincing thing. And, uh, and that leaves, I think, four marks for this bit at the end, with this uh, in the way that some question map questions go, do it all again using different numbers. Um, this wants you to redo the idea of this question uh, using, pre using previous numbers. 95% um, of the maths papers have been marked, I think that might be all of them. Chasing a few of them. Could you use an even odd argument? I don't know. Um, I haven't seen every script. <laughs> it, I, I guess Nic Nicholas is telling me that I used an even odd argument. Um, and then we have to mark it carefully, I think. Uh, How is that going to work? Let me see if I can invent an even odd method. Uh, X and Y. So if X and Y are both even, that is fine, looks okay to me. Um, if one is even and one is odd, then I've got even take away, so X. If x is even and y is odd, then x squared take away 25y squared would be even take away an odd thing would be odd. If x is odd but y is odd? Yeah, okay. If x, if x is odd and y is odd, then x squared minus 25y squared would be even because it'd be odd take away odd. Even, so it's not that. Okay, yeah, there's something, there's something here, isn't there? If they're both even, then this is even take away even, which would be even. Uh, which is not, and uh, if x is odd and y is odd, what is this sequencing? What is this sequencing? I'm not working systematically at all through these four cases. Then this would be odd to take away odd, which is no. Nope. Yep, and the thing about not working systematically is you end up writing the same one down twice. Y is even, then it's odd to take away even, it's odd, which it could be. So then you can conclude that one of them is even and one of them is odd. And then I don't know what to do next. But maybe Nicholas can say in chat. Um, high x plus iy, complex numbers. Um, marks per part for all the questions at the end of the stream. Yeah, okay, if we don't do the questions, I will do the speed run, tell you how it, how the marking went. Okay, so we've got the suggestion from chat that I should maybe consider some sort of even odd strategy for solving this question, which, fine, okay. It's a pretty fat question. We accepted lots of different proofs. Um, uh, I quite liked the last part for giving people, if you, if you understood the first part quite well, then you could pick up some more marks down the end for having a go at trying some stuff. And we were handing out marks down the end here for people who people who wrote out a version of this line at the top with 17s in. Um, we were giving marks for that. Uh, we gave a mark for people who were just trying small numbers because that's an important, the analog of this trying small numbers over here sort of step. Um, these small numbers are nice because they give you negative two, which is quite small. Um, uh, trying small numbers in part five gives you gets you a mark, uh, and then having this idea of running it through the z goes to z squared tumbler um, was worth a mark, and in the end you get down to a solution that probably works. I think we gave people all the marks if they got a solution that works though, because it just says find. So if you found a pet, then probably got probably got the marks. Uh, in interviews, oh questions about interviews. Um, in the interview, do they ask questions on topics that we missed in the map? Probably not, um, because you've had loads of time to think about the map, maybe even talk to teachers or me about map questions. So by the time we get to interview, there's not much to talk about anymore. Um, so questions are out there now, so there's not much point, not much point assessing you on how much you've been thinking about them since. Uh, marks for the parts. Yeah, people are curious about that. People are very excited by this bit of paper I've got. <laughs> I should have guessed that the bit of paper would be more interesting than me. People don't want story time, they want raw numbers. Um, this is Pelt's equation. Uh, there was a question, I think in 2000, and, I want to say 2008. There was a question in 2008, roughly, that was also about 
this equation. Um, see if we can find the question. Um, but it was completely different in, in how it how it worked for the solutions. Um, pretty sure it was at eight. I should have researched this before I went live. Um, where have we gone? Where have we gone? D, G, H, J, E. Ah, yeah, yeah, this one. Uh, this is a couple of open days and things as well. Um, so it's sort of relatively nice question. Um, so I think this question might be a bit too easy, and the one from 2022 may be a bit too hard, but hey, this is solving the equation with two, and it gives you a strategy for solving that to find some find some pairs of integers. Uh, the punchline down here, look at part three. Find a pair of integers which satisfy this equation with a two in it, which are both bigger than 50. I'll try to generate this. It's also about generating big, interesting solutions to this equation. The structure of the solutions... Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, you can use any solution you've got to generate a new solution using this uh, method. If you've got a solution to equals one on the right hand side, um, you can use this method to generate a new solution. I except if you've got the solution x is one, y is zero, then when you try and use this method to generate a new solution, you get one zero back again. Uh, you get the same solution out again. Um, and sometimes that's the only solution. Um, that's why some of these parts of the question say with x bigger than one um, to try and get you away from the solution one comma zero, um, which kind of always works, whatever this number is. Um, one squared minus nothing squared is, is one. Welcome to the Ultimate awesome live stream. Uh, people did 2008. Yeah, okay, okay. And then people couldn't square and write down, uh, yeah, okay, right. Run numbers back into generate logic. Look, hey. And then people, okay, so you get some reward for, I guess you get some reward for having seen a similar question before or having literally thought about generating solutions to an equation before. It happens to be the same equation in that 2008 paper, um, but I'm okay with that. I don't think that's an unfair advantage to say if you've tried a similar question, then you can use this to generate big solutions. Uh, there's loads of places where you want to generate solutions to equations. Okay, I don't think I'm going to actually do the algebra. I want to talk about this pink star. I put a point in here. Um, this point, people found, they found this bit really hard. Um, uh, it's hard in two different ways that I didn't properly anticipate. So yeah, um, uh, Varen, for the last part, yeah, we're onto, we're onto random values of x and y and z. Um, so here's the way I didn't anticipate it being difficult. Let's wipe this clean a little bit. Um, sorry, it's got quite messy. Um, by the time you get down to part two, you've got two equations. You've got x squared minus 19y squared equals z. And you've also shown that x squared plus 19y squared squared minus 192xy squared equals z squared. Um, and in fact, what you've shown is if this, then this. Um, part two says find z if x is 13 and y is 3. Um, and what I hoped people would do is plug these numbers into the first equation to just calculate z based on the x's and y's. But from people's working out, I saw lots of people plug in x and y into the second equation. And then they got z squared equals 4. And then they said z is plus or minus 2. Um, and maybe didn't think about the first equation at all. Uh, because they were just thinking they were just looking up here instead of looking up here. Didn't really anticipate that. Um, so it was a shame because then people have z is plus or minus 2. Whatever. If you know z is plus or minus 2, you know that z squared is 4, so you can carry on with the question. Um, you have kind of already found these numbers by writing out this stuff. Anyway. Um, plugging in x and y into this second equation gives you this, the numbers that you're looking for. Um, people found this hence very difficult, um, I think because they wrote out something like 13 squared minus 19 times 3 squared equals minus 2, and then tried to sort of hence from here without thinking about this equation at all. Um, and to try and just sort of rearrange this stuff, 161, 196, flying around. Um, uh, so that's uh, that was a bit unanticipated difficulty with which equations, which equations this hence refer to. And maybe it could be more explicit, or maybe that's part of the challenge to try out the things that we have perfectly um, before. 
Um, yeah, lots of people found three very hard. Lots of people found um, lots of people found this part very hard. This hence, um, where when you get down to here, you've got I think 340 squared minus 19 times 78 squared is equal to four, um, and it is harder than I thought to spot that you can divide both sides by four. Um, this is an example of a case where if I told you that was worth one mark up front, then you'd try easy things, but actually people try difficult things. Um, it's one of the side effects of not having the question marks on the question. Okay, what does late December, what does late November, early December mean? Uh, it means really by December the 5th, um, because we give people a week no week's notice about interviews, we try to give people more than one week's notice, so late November, um, is what we're, we're really aiming for late November, but at the latest, which is the question that people ask, at the latest, uh, it's December the 5th. Um, I would quite like it if everyone involved, if we all if we all got our emails out, but there's a lot of colleagues, a lot of people, a lot of stuff to do. Uh, it's not, um, yeah, okay, right, good. Okay, good. Um, you can start by the first one, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had this equation for Z all along. Here it is. Don't look at this Z squared. We had a Z right up here as well. Yeah, skimming back up to find out where the Zs are. Maybe you spot this and then start plugging stuff in. And that's actually not, it's not unhelpful because you, you generate something with four on the right hand side and big squares on the left hand side. So you get you get a solution to this bit. You can pick up a couple of marks like that. Okay, um, good. Okay, let's, let's, this feels like a good way to progress. Um, we're not, we're not going to solve every part of the question. Uh, there's a 10 minute rush through of the solutions, um, but we can talk about how many marks things are worth. Ready to move on for three? So we want question two. Uh, question two, speak now, or hold your silence. I don't have the thing, so I can't. <laughs> so someone, someone in chat wants the shortlist minimax, which I think I'm not sharing sure because I think it will just stress people out more than it needs to. Uh, more than I need to. How much do I need to stress people out? Not very much. Um, should stay nice and chill. Um, that's lost the internet. That's not updating. I might not be live anymore. Oh, and here we are. Uh, okay. It's not being sent out to Durham. Not yet. We're doing, doing a bit of cleaning up of data and stuff. Three. Uh, good. Uh, if you don't get an interview, also get an email. We're not we're not monsters. We're not going to just leave you hanging for the rest of your life. Um, there is not a minimum. Right, okay, stop. There's not a minimum for shortlisting. We shortlist people with no mat score. There's all these people affected by a typhoon who we might shortlist some of them. Um, you see, and people then it's thresholds. There are some recommended. There's some recommended bands. I put we put people in these big bands of saying, well, if your mat score is above this point, then probably shortlist. In between. Maybe shortlist, and underneath probably not. Um, but it's not worth. Like, you don't know your math score, so it's not worth thinking about. Um, good. Right, we're gonna move on to three. A couple of quick questions. A lot of applicants to Oxford this year compared to last. Uh, applications to Oxford are very slightly down um, compared to last year. I don't know if that's good news or bad news for you. I guess that's maybe good news. Um, applications are very slightly down by about five percent. Hey, I don't know if that number's on the internet yet. Numbers might not be on the internet. So live stream is full of numbers. Yeah, we'll try and get three, six, and seven as well. Okay. Uh, average math score we have had in the stream a couple of times. Someone will tell you in a minute. It's about 48 and a half for math students, we think. Oh, Christmas uh, thing in chat. Oh, it's the drink reminder. I didn't see it. You all saw it because you're in Slido. I didn't see it because I'm not. <laughs> Don't forget to stay hydrated. Kai says, what have you learnt from this year's maths? Um, I've, I've learnt quite a few things. Um, I've learnt this thing about geometry being not as obvious, this kind of um, finding lines, the geometric part of that being not as obvious as I thought. I've learnt that people really don't like checking their answers, um, that this caught people out and we didn't mean to catch people out, never trying to trick people. Um, but people really don't like checking their answers back in equations. Um, and I've learned that <laughs> integration like this, this integrals question is really weird behind the surface. There's something going on with these integrals. Um, I've also had to think about network stopping conditions quite a bit. 
Good. Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, Mass live stream is full of numbers. Um, do I know about CS? Uh, CS numbers? No, I don't know. Sorry. I track math very closely. I track CS a little bit. Um, five different five different grad students. <laughs> Not just one. And I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, uh, question three. The marks look like this. Are um, you ready? Here we go. Um, there are three marks for these sketches at the front. Um, looking at very roughly looking at features of graphs. Um, so they do they look about right, and there's these labeling uh, points we can check to see if you got that. Um, explain why these integrals uh, can't be zero. There's one mark for explaining why. Um, we have a couple of marks for ex this explanation to explain why this does exist and why there is some point where it hits zero. Um, this kind of an obvious thing is it's negative for a bit and it's positive for a bit, but you can maybe say a little bit, a little bit more precisely than that, um, say what's going on. Um, incredible three marks, very generous for A1, um, working out that that's root three, which people did pretty well at this part. Um, there were three marks for doing an integral or proving something to talk about A2 being between root two and root three. I think the easiest way to do this is to try and do the integral in terms of A um, as the upper limit and then argue about how it changes sign. Um, and then three marks, I hope this adds up. <laughs> yeah, this adds up. Uh, three marks for this argument at the end. Um, and if you got the approximate value of AM, then I think we gave you all three marks. Because uh, it just says find. Um, but if you didn't put root two, or you put something else, or something more complicated, uh, then you can still pick up a couple of marks for your expression, maybe. Uh, good. And people requesting average scores. I had to I had to prepare them before the live stream. We're not doing we're not doing James does pivot tables. This is not an Excel live stream. Um, we could do an Excel live stream. Let's not do an Excel live stream. That sounds it's already a niche live stream. How are we doing? Yeah, pretty niche. Right, good. Okay. Um, bounding integrals geometrically. Oh, that's quite clever. That sounds quite clever. Fit them in between. Uh, Try and bound the area. The weird thing about this question is you're not actually calculating a specific area. You're talking about what the area would be. We want the area to be zero. So it's sort of like an inverse problem. Instead of being told the upper limit and calculating the integral, we're being told that the integral is zero and trying to convert, calculate the, the upper limit that we would need, which is a bit like finding the inverse of a function or finding the roots of a function. Um, I guess it's the roots of a polynomial, uh, and the roots of the polynomial are quite hard to talk about in general. Um, yeah, so the last part of this question is really weird. Should we jump down there? We could talk a little bit about what, what this looks like, I suppose. Um, if the power's even, then this thing's positive, so the integral can't be, can't be zero. But if the power's an odd number, then you get um, a bit where it's negative, um, and then it's zero at one, and then it increases, and it goes through, always goes through one comma, oh sorry, root two comma one, always goes through this point, and when x is root two, this is two squared minus one, which is one to the power of n, always goes through that point. Um, this is a terrible graph, why am I drawing it so small? Look how unconfident that line is as well, it's really rubbish. Well, there we go. Okay, um, so it's got this negative bit, a positive bit, and it goes through one at root two. Um, as you make this odd number really large, um, these things in between sort of go to zero, that you get zero contribution to the integral over here, and kind of zero over there. Um, and then after that, the graph goes really quick, really quickly. Um, I think if you haven't already stuck this into Desmos, a good exercise is to stick this into Desmos. Um, so let's let's try that. Um, so what is this graph? So x squared minus one to the power of. Let's put this slider in as two m, two m minus one, uh, where m is a whole number, uh, which goes from one to ten like that. Okay. Um, so there's the graph uh, m one. We did some integrals on that. There's m two and then m three. So if we zoom in a bit on here. Um, I hope you can see that the in between zero and root two, 
the graph's going to zero. Now we can make that precise because the values of the original thing, x squared minus one, are between minus one and one. When you raise that to a high power, you get very close to zero. Um, something that's not obvious is that there's a little bit of area over here and there's a little bit of area over here um, and they don't balance, you need to go past root two. So there's this fact in the question that when you integrate up to root two, you get actually quite a big negative contribution and then a small positive contribution from this tiny bit in here. Um, I'm just gonna mark on square root two on this graph. Oh, come on, Desmos, you know what I mean. Okay, um, so you get a little bit of positive contribution on the left here um, before you get up to x as square root two. Um, so there's sort of this negative contribution and this positive contribution. It is not obvious that the negative contribution outweighs the positive contribution, which is why the question tells you that x is bigger than root 2. After root 2, um, the graph's growing really, really quickly. So any area, any if we integrate any further, the integral will get really, really big, really fast. Um, in particular, it's bigger than 1 straight away. This integral is going to be massive. What's chat say? Uh, chat says, thank you. Um, triangle up to where it crosses the x-axis. Ah, it's the geometric. Geometric uh, triangle up to where it crosses the x-axis. Ah, that's over here. That's at one. Ah, yeah, okay. So this is bigger than you can bound this integral. Oh, I think I know your bound as well. I think your bound is like this. You bounded bounded the integral above this line, which is not quite true over there. But it's probably fine. I'm just saying this integral is quite small, and then that integral balances out. Okay, cool. Um, uh, probably got to say hi. Yeah, don't have any of these questions. That's expected. Don't stress out, everyone. Thanks, physics girl. Um, I didn't give you access for catching the graph question. Oh, sorry, yeah. Big splodge to show it all goes through through that point. Yeah, okay. Definitely going through root two comma one. Okay, good. Um, chat suddenly popping off. Uh, the video, the live stream is available afterwards. Crunchy keyboard noises. Yeah, cherry. It's really old make of cherry, but it's a decent keyboard. Um, uh, right, okay, so uh, it's probably square root 2 is m1 is infinity. I think if people said square root 2 in this part, I think we gave you most of the marks. I think we gave you three marks. Oh, probably. Right, good. Uh, we're not doing shortlist thresholds because I think it will unnecessarily stress people out. I think people will try to, try to score their own papers, which is hard, and then we'll try to decide what my recommendation is, uh, and it's very unlikely you do that right. Good, right, okay. Um, overall, though, I think this is pretty pretty odd as a thing to do at the end. Um, this question is much harder than I thought it would be, <laughs> in a way, compared to, compared to the original version of this question. The original version of this question is almost impossible, um, and then it got turned to this. Um, by the way, uh, this thing over here, um, so we've made m really large, um, if I flip this upside down, maybe you've seen this before. Um, you've seen this before, um, if you've done any statistics. Um, because that is a uh, bell curve. Um, let me see if I can get the right one. Um, 20? No. How does this work? Uh, e to the x squared n x squared over. Ah, uh, yeah, put 20 in here. No, put 20 in here. <laughs> 20 in here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, different colour. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so this thing is um, pretty, pretty similar to uh, bell curve from statistics. It gets better the larger you make m. Uh, so this, the integral under here is essentially related to an integral you have in statistics when you're looking at the integral under a bell curve. Um, this kind of approximation is pretty weird. That is the exponential function. That is some polynomials closely related. Uh, what a surprise. It's a really good approximation. Um, so your curve kind of looks like the statistics bell curve. Okay. Uh, the sacred Z curve, says <laughs> someone in chat. I think they mean the stats one. Um, good, okay. Uh, Sheck also looks a bit like a bell curve. I think I agree. Uh, yeah, cool. Turn up in a lot of places. Uh, exponential, you go. Uh, okay. Uh, someone messaged you a question about normal distributions. Ah, you get questions about normal distributions. That's such a cool sort of thing to get in chat. Right, good, okay. Um, <laughs> That's the trifecta is right, good, okay, um. The quad, quad, all four things. Of these things I say to stall for time when we're in between questions, and I just hit all four of them straight away. I think I've seen a bingo card for this. 
Um, question four. Again, there's a sketch in here. Just seen a suggestion in the chat that we give you scruff, give you axes to do your sketch on. I don't love it because then if you want to change it, you've got to draw your own one and that's a bit stressful. Gave you three marks for this sketch. A um, couple of marks for describing this. People did not like that words. Uh, people did not find this easy at all. Um, if you found this hard, um, then yeah, I found this hard as well. Um, people were writing about these transformations. I think this is like this combination thing, right? Where it's you want to change this x into a 4x plus 1. How do you do that? I don't know. Uh, oh, I said, yeah, okay, let's not do it again. <laughs> At some point, as a as a joke, I taught myself to say all of them wrong. I can't undo it now. I say them all wrong. Um, I can't fix it. It's a joke about shine. Um, I'll explain it sometime. Um, finding all of these points, uh, I think we gave you two points for this. Finding all of the points that lie on the curve C. Let's get a curve of C going. Um, uh, there are three points, so it's, these are A and B. Uh, there are three points that lie on this. Um, the origin, which is maybe obvious, these distances are both one. Um, and then the less obvious ones, there's a point over here and a point over here. Uh, root 2 and minus root 2. Um, we gave you four points for this big chunk of algebra to work out the expression f of x, um, which turns out to be 4x squared plus 1 minus x squared minus 1, uh, all square rooted. Square rooted inside there as well. Sort of similar thing to something before. Um, and then part two is to talk about the turning points and the way this moves around the turning points is too. And then we gave you a couple of marks. Um, for this sketch, we were looking for whether you had some nice symmetry on your picture, because this should probably be symmetric. It's a nice symmetric setup. Uh, a and B play quite similar roles. They're the same distance from the origin as each other, and um, you're taking those two distances and multiplying them. Multiplication is commutative, so you can kind of swap A and B, so it should be symmetric that way around. It should also be symmetric up down, um, because distances up here are the same as distances down here. So we, we looked at symmetries on your picture, um, roughly, and we looked to see if it was roughly a kind of bounded curve. Um, it actually is a kind of infinity sign. Um, these curves have got a name. I've forgotten what it is. Let me look it up. Um, does anybody know in chat? Um, the question is not me. This question is lovely. You draw an infinity sign at the end. Um, drawing infinity signs is what? It's the hallmark of a good question. Uh, it's not this. It is over here. Can't remember what this graph's called. Um, it's a sort of. Uh, while I was writing this question, I briefly thought that I'd invented this, which is always, you know, humbling to when you find out that you obviously didn't invent it. Um, but it seems like it's the sort of thing that wasn't very hard to invent. So obviously, I did not invent this. It's the year 2022. How could somebody invent this? Um, but hey, isn't that nice? One, because um, I love sliders. Uh, got to this question by. Someone says, how did I write this? Lemon skate, is that what it is? I think it's not quite a lemon skate. Oh, is it a lemon skate of Bernoulli? Cassini Oval? Two foci? Yes, it's a lemon skate of Bernoulli. There you go. Um, got to this question by thinking about circles of Apollonius. Circles of Apollonius, so where you have that ratio, uh, is... Wish it doesn't always like that. Um, circle of Apollonius is where you have a ratio instead. Um, for a, for a cons and the punchline to that question, if you have a ratio instead, is that, hey, it turns out to be a circle. Um, so the way I wrote this question was to think, what if instead of dividing, we multiply, you get some sort of weird blobby shape. I put it in Desmos. I thought, played around with the slider. I thought, wait a minute, what was that? What was that on the way in between? Um, there's some special value. What should I set that equal to? Oh, I want the distances to be, oh, one. Um, oh, there's an infinity symbol. I have to set this as a mat question. Um, and then work out how to turn it into a mat question. Um, so circle of Apollonius involves division. If you multiply instead, then you get something called, apparently, a lemon skate of Bernoulli. So good times. Um, Matt Parker ate some biscuits while talking about these. Well, there you go. Cool. Um, actually doing the transformations. So the question was written from the bottom up. The last part had to be this. So then how do we get there? <laughs> well, I'll probably want you to work out this function for what it is. 
and oh gosh, the function is quite weird. How are you going to sketch that or have any idea what's going on for that function? I guess I should get you to do this first. Well, how are you going to draw that? How are you going to have any idea where the turning point is or what's going on for this function? Uh, maybe I'll do this and some transformations. So this, this question was written in this direction. This last part of the question was worth two marks. Cool. I don't know if it's helpful. Circle ratio thing to look at the equation of the circle. Yes, Kai. Uh, you can. The circle ratio thing, you can rearrange it and it's a circular equation. Um, it's called a circle of Apollonius. For the, I guess, once you know it's called a circle of Apollonius, it's not that surprising. Cool. Right. Okay. I need to watch Matt Parker eat some biscuits. Uh, and I gotta remember the phrase "lemon skate of Benui." The Wikipedia page has got uh, a GIF. Go on, tell me I'm pronouncing that one wrong as well. Uh, if we drew the graph wrong in the early part and then drew it in the last one, didn't root it. Um, you probably lost a mark somewhere for not rooting a thing. But if you drew a decent picture at the end, then you can have those marks. These marks are kind of separate, separate from the other part. They're sort of insulated off from the other parts of the question. So that's right. Five is great fun. Um, should we do five? The Squirkle video. Uh, yeah, it's biscuits because it rhymes with lemon skate. Got, I've got a lot of time for Matt Parker. Lemon skates, right. Is that an Aussie thing? Right, anyway, okay. Getting distracted by Matt Parker. I've got half an hour and I've got three questions. It's Ten minutes a question. Welcome to the Maths Live Um Questions five, six, and seven are not my questions. They are written by computer scientists. Um, this one, we'll do the marks in a moment. It's got eight parts, nine in a way. Um, <laughs> it's got a lot of parts. Um, it's about different strategies, um, and it's about this relationship between Alice, who's playing the game, versus the unnamed host. Maybe the host is Bob, or maybe it's Charlie. Um, from one of those previous questions. Anyway, um, the host swaps items um, and the host does this secretly. Um, so the host doesn't tell Alice what swap's happening, um, but the host swaps the item that Alice has just seen behind the door she's just opened with something nearby. Um, Kai likes this one, I should write questions like this one. Um, right, okay. Uh, good, okay. There's a concrete example. I like it when questions do this, to give you an example. Um, and there's this aim of the game, um, what Alice wants in life, which is to get lots of items. Um, it's a little bit like the setup for the Monty Hall problem, where things are being swapped and doors are being opened, and there's maybe three doors. Um, except there's quite the, this rule about swapping adjacent items is quite important, not in the original Monty Hall thing. It's a different problem. Um, uh, nobody's being offered the choice to stick or to open more doors or switch doors or something. Uh, okay, it's a bit of reading uh, to try and get get to what's going on. Um, this swapping, anyway. So things get swapped with nearby nearby items. Um, what I learned from this one is that there are many possible correct answers to some of these parts of questions. There are many possible answers. Um, so six part one, we gave you a couple of marks, I think. Is this true? Am I sure about this? Yeah, apparently we gave you a couple of marks. Mad. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was yeah, yeah, no, we really did. Okay. Oh no, that's six. We gave you one mark for this. <laughs> Quite for question five, four. We gave you a mark for finding this increasing sequence. Um, Alice shouldn't pick doors that are next to each other. Really ever, because if she picks a door and then the next one, the host might have put the, the thing she just saw behind that door and she'll see it again. She doesn't really want that. Um, so she probably shouldn't probably shouldn't do that to pick door one and then door two. Um, so she should pick uh, different doors. Um, this one says distinct doors. Okay, really fun, de-stressed you. More problem solving than other question fives. I think you only have to do one question five, right? Um, okay. Uh, a lot of this involves uh, adapting your strategy so here, adapting this to just be odd doors. Uh, this says increasing again, because we wanted you to, we wanted a unique solution for this part. So there's only one way, if, if they have to be distinct and increasing, so different increasing ones, odd doors. Um, to get 10 items, we need a new idea. 
And actually, we need new ideas a couple of times through this question. We need a new idea here, and we need a new idea here. And then this last part is kind of separate. Um, justify your answer, this bit at the bottom. Um, the marks work like this. Um, we gave people one mark for doing the kind of special case with uh, 13 things, picking 10 of them. And then we gave two marks for coming up with a strategy that generalizes that. Um, so this 10 is 2k plus 2. I saw a lot of people write out 3k plus 1 equals 13. Aha, k is 4, 2, 2, 4, 2k plus 2 is 10. Aha, it's the same sort of numbers as the previous part. Uh, to generalize this. Uh, we gave down here, for part six, we gave people one part, one point for coming up with a strategy down here. It's a bit of a better, it's a better strategy by this point. Um, you're now getting 11 things. Um, and then generalizing it, yeah, to to this case, uh, I'll give you a couple of marks over here for picking that up. Um, in between, for these uh, special cases in between, um, which are supposed to be to help you think of different strategies. For three doors, I just can go one, one, three. You, you, only at that point, you have to pick distinct. You have to pick the same door twice. Um, so this is breaking your idea that they they don't have to be distinct. Um, up here, we told you distinct. Down here, maybe they don't have to be distinct. And in here, there's for this one, there's no way to do it with increasing doors, even if they're not distinct. Weakly increasing sequences don't work. You need to do something like this, or something like one five three. One five. There's lots of possible answers. Something I learned marking this one is that there are many possible answers, especially because your ideas down here, if you have the ideas in a different order, if you have a good idea early on, then the thing you write down up here is just completely different to whatever else writes down. Because you write down the first the first ten doors of your eleven door strategy, and that's fine. Anyway, it's a bit harder to generalize, but gosh. Uh, right. Uh, and there was so one mark for each of these, and then I think four marks down here for talking about this interaction between Alice and the host. Um, quite a lot of people just wrote six is even, and I was a bit disappointed by that. By that. Um, but overall, I was sort of impressed by the way people found solutions, found these ideas um, about how picking the same door twice is quite interesting, because if you pick the same door twice, you know that the prize has switched, so you'll get something different. Um, but then you have to worry about where that prize has gone. Um, if you try to do one, three, five, five, one, which is a permutation of this, this doesn't work. Um, I want to talk about why. Um, so if you pick three, then the host might move that thing to door four. Then when you pick five, the host might switch that, switch that so that this thing that was behind door four is now behind door five. And then you pick door five, and you see it again. And that's quite hard to spot when you list the numbers, that if you pick three, that thing could go to the right, and then when you pick five, the thing that was at the door four could then move again to now be behind door five. You never wrote down the number four, but the thing has now moved through door number four. By the time you picked three, it moved right, and the time you picked five, it moved right. So now, if you pick five, you'll see the same item again. Um, that was quite hard to spot, and that was the kind of problem with a lot of the sequences that people write down, that there was the, some way that the host could do the swaps, so that um, so that Alice would accidentally, accidentally Alice would have picked doors that made this thing move twice. Um, oh, it's comforting. Okay, nobody's ever called this comforting before. Um, is there an invariance for the last part is a very good question. Um, so... The crucial thing here for part eight is that we're looking for, the question is asking about a sequence, not a strategy. Uh, so it's not a strategy. Um, looking for a sequence. Um, if Alice is allowed to strategically pick doors based on what she sees, then she can get all six items. Um, she can do 1166 to get the outside four items. That's the sort of idea that people have, I think, because you, we've been picking doors twice along, along, a lot along the way. One, one, six, six feels like a good start because you get all of those, you get all of those items. The host doesn't have any choices when you pick one and six, um, and in fact, after you've picked one, one, six, six, everything's back where it started. But you've now seen four of the items. Uh, the problem is the things behind doors three and four. Um, you have to pick if you're going to open one of these doors eventually. Um, 
maybe you open door three, well, the host can now make sure you never see the thing behind door six. The host, by the way, can keep the things behind doors three and four safely behind doors three and four, but can make sure to swap the item you haven't seen yet, can always choose to do the swaps, so that the next time you open one of these doors, you won't see the item that you're looking for now. Um, I suppose that's the thing, that Alice has a sequence that has to guarantee... So this is a little bit like um, Alice picks one sequence, and that has to work whatever the host does. Um, so it's a bit like Alice is giving up agency, and the, and the host can do lots of different stuff. Uh, okay. Can I share the most obvious solution to part three? Yeah, sure. Um, so for three, there's this idea of uh, pick doors twice. Um, this is a nice idea. I mean, particularly picking doors 1-1 one, one, and 13-13 13, 13 is, is pretty good. Um, because if you pick a door twice, you see different things. Um, this has consequences. If you pick door 5 twice, then the item that was originally behind door 6, maybe you've seen that one now, because maybe the host moved it in. The item that was behind door 4, maybe you've seen that one now. Um, so you need to leave a bit more space in between the doors. Um, if you space out your picks a little bit, though, to pick 4-4 four, four as your next ones, then uh, picking 4-4 four, four maybe disrupts the stuff that was to the left and to the right, or both or neither or something. Um, so it's maybe messing up 5. Uh, picking 7-7 seven, seven is, is, is far enough away that um, um, far enough away that these things don't interact. Um, so picking doors twice and also spacing them out so that although we're doing double picks, the host can't move stuff far enough. Avoiding this kind of problem over here where um, those threes and fives conspire to allow the host to move something to door four and then move it off door four into one of the doors that we were going to look at. Um, that's kind of the end of the nice strategies. The strategy down here is very complicated. Okay, uh, lots of marks down the end. And people normally picked up a door. I think we gave people marks for realizing the doors three and four were important. Okay, um, no sequence part eight. I think we gave at least one mark if somebody just said, if someone just said no, uh, and then shan't, uh, I think we gave them like one mark out of four. Uh, <laughs> nobody wrote no full stop shan't. Um, okay. Uh, the bands, uh, people are asking about bands because I'm refusing to tell people. We do, I do some recommendation bands where I, I look at people's mat scores, I sort them into these bands of like high mat scores, mid or low mat scores, low mat scores, um, and I make very broad recommendations to all of the tutors um, to say what's a high mat score, what's a middle mat score, what's a lowish mat score. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to be shortlisted or not shortlisted. The tutors go and look at the rest of the application as well. Um, but so that it's consistent across colleges, it's one of the things we do so that tutors at different colleges are aware of this year, what was a high mat score, what's a kind of middle mat score, what's a, a lower mat score. Um, I'm not saying the numbers because I think they will stress people out too much. Cool. Um, and we separately have other concepts of bands that you might have been asking about, but let's not go there right now because we've got 20 minutes to talk about two questions. That's 10 minutes per question. Um, what's the standard deviation? Oh, this has become a statistics live stream and an Excel live stream. I, I never published the standard deviation. Uh, question six is two pages. It's got a lot of diagrams. It's got quite a bit of writing. Uh, lots of people got the arrows the wrong way round. Um, there's a lot of arrows, very understandable. Um, I thought once you worked out what the arrows are and how people change their minds, um, it's not that hard to get going with the question to work out what's going on. Um, I learned that in part three, there are many, many, many correct solutions. Um, I saw some brilliant solutions. Uh, there is this... Um, uh, so the solution that we were thinking of was a sort of binary tree, where you would take these uh, take these bees and look at, look at whether they're square at the start and, and compare them into... to use these six additional people that we've got to form some sort of binary tree where these people will only be convinced if both of the bees were square. So we'll set them to triangle to start off with. They'll only be convinced if both the bees were square. Um, and then now we've got four people. Um, if they all switch to square, then they will definitely convince these two influencers to be square. 
Um, and then these two influences will be allowed to talk to A, and they will convince A to be square. And that will only happen if everything's square. Um, that's what we were thinking of. Uh, and it turns out there are loads of solutions. It's one of the reasons I'm glad that we get uh, grad students to market. Uh, grad students took this brilliant, brilliantly in their stride um, and went for went for it, <laughs> assessing whether people's uh, quite complicated networks worked. Um, the My favorite one uh, was the following. Um, take your six new influencers. Here they are. Um, and have A follow everybody. Um, A is now following 14 different people. Okay? Um, which is allowed, I think, in the rules. Um, A is, nothing to say what the maximum number of people you can follow is. A is following 14 people. A will only change its opinion if a strict majority of those 14 people are squares. A strict majority means not 7-7, seven, seven. it means you have to get 8 of them to be squares. Um, 6 of them are triangles, so the only way to get 8 of them to be squares would be for all of the bees to be squares. Um, so this is brilliant. Uh, this solution just works. It's just throw in your 6 new people, set them to triangle, because that seems safe, and then have A follow absolutely everybody. Um, we didn't spot the solution when we were setting the question. Um, some people did it, and we, we did do that one. I am giving you the marks yet. Yeah. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, doing the fun bit. Um, there are so many other things that work. Um, one of the markers, in their spare time, one of the markers came up with an amazing solution that sort of, um, it works by having a, it works by having all the bees talk to each other, like this, in a chain. So then, if there's a triangle in here, this will convince a sort of spare influencer over here, because they didn't have any of these ones on the sidelines, spare influencer over here that maybe it's time to be triangle um, because they're also being convinced about squares from someone else um, so now maybe if they're triangle yeah 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 no they're square and this one's triangle right okay 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 and then talk to A no yes yes good okay um, something like this <laughs> with just two people in here and all the bees talking to each other. Um, so then if all of the bees are squares, uh, this thing will stay as square all the way through. All the squares, all the square data will get passed down, influencing all the bees to just stay square. Um, and this will be square and it's stable and it stays square forever. But if there's a triangle in here, then the triangle will get passed down, it will influence all the bees and then it will influence this one. Um, and then because it will overwhelm together with this uh, this triangle coming in from here, it'll convince, finally convince this person to switch to triangle. Um, that'll switch A to triangle, and then A can't switch back, because once this thing turns to triangle, once this is triangle, it can't switch back, because there's no way to convince it to change its mind again. Now it is triangle, and it's got a triangle pointing at it, it can't turn back. Um, so this is a sort of remarkably simple solution, with just two influences in there, and just a weird bit of network. Um, yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun. Um, one of the markers came up with that one. That's the kind of simplest solution we saw, other than the have everyone follow that. Um, have everyone follow in, inwards. Um, huge variety of people's solutions. I, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it took absolutely ages. This was the slowest one to mark um, <laughs> because, uh, because of how complicated it was. Two marks up here uh, for deciding that it's not, not stable, uh, not necessarily stable, uh, and justifying. Uh, we gave people three marks over here for um, talking about this network and justifying carefully. Um, there's several different cases depending on, you've got to be a little bit careful. A and B might not have the same opinion. It doesn't necessarily all end up with the same opinion. Uh, so there's something going on there. Excuse me. Three marks for drawing this network, setting up the initial opinions, justifying your answer. People had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, justify your answer again. Uh, people should explain why their thing works. Um, uh, lots of explaining all the way through. Uh, three marks for this one, uh, which felt a little bit maybe easier. Uh, the answer is just if, if x is following b, work out what happens. Um, and then a small bit down here, one mark for this, and then three marks for this description about this at the end. So a lot of fun, really. Um, oh, people like the kangaroo. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, 
Well, by this point, people have got, I think, quite confused about what was going on. They'd drawn a lot of networks, they'd drawn a lot of things flipping backwards and forwards. Um, people seem quite convinced by this point that if your graph's got no cycles, then it's necessarily going to be eventually stable, which I think is true. Um, I'm not sure people really convinced me that that was true. Uh, marks for wrong direction arrows. So if you've got the wrong direction arrows, if you've got your arrows in the wrong direction, then you would probably get some marks over here because it doesn't really matter, does it? We wouldn't even notice that you've got your arrows in the wrong direction over here. Um, over here, unfortunately, you've made the question quite a bit easier by having the influence go the wrong way um, because everyone's listening to H. If you flip it upside down, then you've got um, everyone's listening to H. And that, unfortunately, makes the question slightly too easy. So you're not that generous around here. Um, in part three, uh, if you drew your arrows backwards, we knew what you meant. Um, in part four, oh gosh, I think it's symmetric under, if you flip the arrows and change the rolls of A and C, then it's fine. So you can do that part like normal, and then everything's fine. Part five. So flipping the direction of the arrows only messes up part two of the question. It makes part two slightly easier. Um, we couldn't really, couldn't really let you have that, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't get to the info because you thought 39, but we've all been there. We all have, at some point, we have written down 39 and we have thought that's prime. Have I done the full story for that one? I'll do the full story at the end. We've got 15 minutes. We're well, moving on to 7 in a second. I've got less to say about the few science ones. Have I done the 39 story? I think I have. Okay, someone in chat tell, in chat tell me the 39 story and then I'll do the 39 story at the end if, if we haven't quite got it. Uh, this data operator, let's do 7. Let's do the numbers first. Which valid sequences can the data operator achieve? Two marks for finding all of them. Um, and then three marks for talking about how many valid, valid sequences there are and justifying your answer, which people did, people did well at that. Uh, four marks for talking about, in general, um, how many valid sequences can be made. So look, this is already nine. We've already done most of the question. Um, the bit on the next page um, about things being three valid, so split into these threes, um, um, split into threes uh, is not actually worth that many marks in the grand scheme of things. There are three marks for each of these parts. Um, uh, again, for counting the three valid sequences, it was the kind of combina combinations thing. Um, part four there doesn't involve, I think, anything to do with computer science, really, or data operators or anything. So if you're a math student, I think you can read this and then maybe have some idea about how to do this question. If you've never seen it before, then there you go. Um, and that last part about making these valid sequences is, I think, actually quite hard. Um, three, couldn't factorize a quadratic in the kangaroo. 25 times six is 125. Oh, a kangaroo. Um, top SMC score, 110. That sounds like a hard SMC paper. It's out of 125, right? Or is it not out of 125 anymore? Top SMC score. Um, right, cool, okay. Divisibility rules and deriving them. You see, the thing about divisibility rules, feel free, by the way, feel free to try and write this math question. <laughs> um, I've written quite a few math questions now and it's very tough. <laughs> but you should try and write the math question about divisibility rules. Um, uh, problem with, the reason it's not going to be a math question, I think, is that I can use is because some people already know loads about divisibility rules and it'll fill That'll be, fat. That'll be sad. Um, 2021 paper was quite easy. Maybe that's true. The 2021 was quite hard. Have we yo-yoed? Have we yo-yoed? That's something for an internal discussion. Uh, oh, so yeah, someone thought factors, yeah, powers. We're doing Jason mistakes. Um, okay, 39, sorry. Um, it's the team challenge. Uh, does anyone do the team challenge? UKT team challenge? It's, it's like people are talking about the kangaroo and the SMC and other maths challenges. Uh, these, this is a UK thing. Um, it's a maths competition. But there's this other maths competition that uh, the UKMC used to run, and I think still run sometimes, um, for teams of four students, um, where your team of four students um, work together to solve maths problems uh, to try and beat other schools at maths. Um, it is a lot like the idea behind the uh, maths teams in the film Mean Girls. If you've seen Mean Girls, then just you know imagine that. Um, so I, I was on my school's maths team. Uh, big surprise there, I'm sure. Um, and it was the first ever 
uh, seen year one of these for, for older kids, um, sixth formers, uh, year 11s. Um, it was the first time it happened. Uh, we've made the national final. We've lost the national final. Um, uh, senior team challenge, we were doing quite well. Um, at one point, uh, the team, we made a mistake. We thought that 39 was a prime number in that we were doing a sort of uh, crossword sort of thing and we, we had to guess a prime number. Um, we knew it was a prime number starting with three. We put in 39. 39 is not prime. Uh, we lost we lost two marks at that step for thinking that 39 was prime. And then we lost... Can you see where it's going? Um, we lost the overall national final by one mark. <laughs> so we um, lost the team challenge national final because we thought that 39 was prime. Um, it was quite a quiet train journey home. Um, so if you've ever missed out on a thing because of a small mistake you made, I'm with you, and you can bounce back. Uh, it's technically two people on the team thought the 39 was prime. Um, we're not pointing fingers, but technically the team was for this question. The team was split into there were two people on this, two people on the other side. It's like a crossword where half the team have got the across clues, half the team with the down clues. Um, but we're not pointing. We're not pointing fingers. Um, and we never we, we entered again afterwards. We never got that close. Um, team challenge. There you go. Uh, that's the thirty nine story. <laughs> uh, team challenge still runs. I think might not be running this year, but has run recently. Uh, Varen said that their school doesn't do it. Um, I think during COVID it didn't happen. Afterwards, I'm not sure if it started again. Um, I found it quite a lot of fun at the time, and I think I preferred it to the. Uh, math challenge stuff and the the which I mean it's also math questions right but um, a lot of the math challenge stuff is tests that you do in silence and you, you sit alone and you you think about your math questions um, whereas the team math challenge you're working with a team you're talking to other people and you're you, know, you, you say a question you say your answer of maybe you're, you're talking to someone else you say your answer and they say yeah brilliant I agree let's go um, that feels a lot more like real life um, and later on working on problems and being at university and working on problems with other people um, it's a lot more like a sort of team effort or talking to other people about mathematics um, that was probably a more I don't know I've also done a lot of tests in silence as well um, good times um, is maths collaborative at research level or lonely? <sighs> a bit of both um, <laughs> a bit of both um, so some researchers um, will work on problems that only they're working on, uh, but there's a lot more collaboration in mathematics than there used to be. Um, go back 100 years, there's I think not very much collaboration. Ah, Littlewood and Hardy, what am I talking about? Go back 200 years, there's not very much collaboration in mathematics. Um, recently in science, there's been massive collaborations. Um, mathematics has just been through an interesting period of people working together over the internet on big maths problems. Uh, the search for Twin Primes has got a great narrative to it of um, people working together, uh, big groups of people collaborating uh, by to improve our understanding um, with lots of other people working together. If you would like to see the story of that uh, massive online collaboration of hundreds of mathematicians working together, um, <laughs> the best story, best version of it I know is Closing the Gap, which is a book by Vicky Neal. Um, Vicky's not watching right now, but hey, Vicky, I'm advertising your book. Again. Uh, so the gap is the gap between prime numbers. Uh, I mean, closing the gap that we're looking for. We found examples of primes that are very different. We found infinitely many examples of primes that differ by some huge number. Can we reduce that huge number until we found infinitely many examples of primes that differ by two? Those are called twin primes, like 37 and 39. Um, they're twin primes because they differ by two. Um, can we find infinitely many examples like that? No, but nice. Um, we've got examples for bigger numbers than two, but can we find uh, infinitely many examples? Right, we're, uh, we've got five minutes to go. What are we doing? Um, there are not recommended thresholds. These don't get published on the website. Um, I should maybe not have told you because now you're overthinking them. Uh, yeah, everyone likes Vicky Neal as well. Someone got the joke. Someone got the joke. Yeah, an anonymous person. <laughs> I'm so funny. Right, good. Okay. Um, I think I've sped up through those questions, especially the computer science ones. 
I don't really tell you anything about the solution at the end there for seven. Um, I find this question extremely difficult. Good thing I don't have to do this one. Right, good. Um, I think I've run out of questions as uh, story time as well. Um, uh, two is maybe worth saying. So puzzle question. Uh, if you change this number, you'll maybe now be empowered to go and solve this equation for different numbers. Um, there's, there's a good story here that uh, mathematicians several hundred years ago challenged each other to solve this equation with different numbers in because sometimes it's extremely hard and sometimes the solutions are massive. Um, so uh, in some sense this is part of a hundred year old tradition of hundreds of year, year old tradition of um, setting a mathematician the challenge of solving this equation with some weird number in here. Um, sometimes the solutions are much larger than the number you put in. Um, so homework, try putting other numbers in here. You know that sometimes there are no interesting solutions, sometimes there are some weird solutions. Can you find other ones? Math jail. Have I read Yitang Zhang's paper? I have not, and I'm not sure I'm going to understand it. Um, have I started marking? We have marked 95% of the scripts, and I think that is the scripts because of people who are absent. We're chasing a few, but chasing a few, but I think marking has now happened. Right, cool, okay. Um, we're not going to do an Excel stream, that sounds terrible. I found out recently that Excel is a sort of extreme sport now, that some people do Excel competitively, and it's like an eSport. Maybe I, maybe I don't mean extreme sport. Uh, uh, so somebody got the joke. Um, I'm hilarious, look, that's two people. Oh, the, this person sounds quite concerned, so maybe I'm just worrying chat. Um, uh, Excel, yeah, great stuff. Uh, recommend learning shortcuts. Um, <laughs> there's really part of my life before Excel and then getting an administration job and finding that actually I do have to do a lot of stuff with Excel. Uh, but don't panic, that marking uses actual database software. Right. Uh, yeah, Excel Esports, people making stuff in Excel, it's a thing. You can go and look up Excel Esports, it's been on TV. Um, you're going to hear if you've got an interview by the 5th of December, uh, but hopefully a little bit before then, um, so that you get some more notice about whether you've got an in interview or not. Um, oh yeah, brilliant, okay. Um, Excel, banking, let's go. Uh, right, cool, okay. I'm going to have to try and think of one more story. Integrals. Graphs. Maybe I should have given you graphs. Some people can miss this on the same axis thing. And the weird thing is if you miss the same axes, then you're going to probably miss the ones that lie on both curves because they're not intersecting. I don't know how to do that. Maybe I've drawn one set of axes for you to draw them on. You could draw them on these axes below. Maybe that would be good. Um, some more mad solutions over here. Um, if you take uh, three, so bank of three triangles over here, um, and you take one influencer in here who's initially set to triangle, and you point four B's at them and the three A's, and these three sort of not A's, these three bystanders who are all triangles then they'll only get convinced to switch to square if all of these b's were square. So what you need to do is con construct two of these and have them point into A. So this is a completely different network that uh, also works. Um, I've sort of run out of circles, but it's okay, I can reuse these ones. <laughs> these sort of uh, panel panel bank of triangles over here. So this question was super hard to mark because people would draw something like this. And then you go, oh my goodness, I've never seen this before. Where was going on? Um, so, yeah, good times. Uh, most complicated, longest, messiest solution you saw for this question. Um, people drew all manner of stuff, and then it was super hard to work out uh, with kind of layers, like a bit like this, but with like layers and things pointing about around themselves. People are really keen. People are really keen on having the bees point to each other, and then, it, and then it's got cycles. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> but then maybe also have a triangle pointing in here, so then it's really hard. Uh, you effectively set my grad students um, about 5,000 versions of this question um, because in this part of the question you had to simulate what would happen in this in this setup in the different cases um, whereas for the previous part of the question you set the question for my grads 
to mark 5,000 different nodes. Much more complicated networks with many times more possibilities for the inputs uh, and 5,000 attempts of it. So <laughs> that took the longest to mark. Right, cool. Um, uh, people of the past seem really clever. No one today seems as clever. Um, I'm not going to compare myself to Einstein to comment on this um, this point here. I am going to point out that Einstein didn't have a live stream. Um, and maybe if Einstein had had a live stream, we'd have seen some stupid stuff from Einstein too. Oh, not 5,000 Not five thousand computer science applicants. That's not true. Okay. Good point. Correction. Not 5,000 attempts because there's not 5,000 computer science applicants. There are 5,000... People did the math for all. Not all of them did question six. Thank you for not all doing question six. Right, good. Okay, um, people are asking for more statistics, but this is not an Excel stream. And it, we've hit seven. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, if you've emailed me about a talk recently, I've been marking 5,000 of these. Well, not, I've been doing 5,000 of these. I've got behind with my emails. I'm really sorry if you've asked for a school talk recently. Um, I have at least three requests that I have guiltily kept in my inbox. Go back to you soon. Um, okay. Interviews, 5th of December, probably earlier. I don't know what math scores people are going to need. It's going to be a broad distribution because we're looking at so many other things as well. Uh, Rebel feels a bit better, so that's good. Um, I will take that. Uh, let's wait for it to appear on screen. Slightly better. Okay, we're back in two weeks to talk about interview problems. Uh, hopefully people have found out. <sighs> Who knows? Um, but in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to stop talking about math problems and we're going to do a math live stream episode where we talk about... Uh, interview questions instead. I've got some past interview questions I want to talk about um, and we might try and do some of them with chat. Uh, if you've got friends who are going to be interviewed by Cambridge or Imperial or Manchester or wherever uh, then they might like to see this too. Um, so we'll see you then in two weeks for the 1st of December for another episode of the Oxford Mac Livestream. Bye!